on this great Shabbat de Shabbaton. That your commands his am, his nation of people, according to his election, according to his directives that we gather on the Shabbats. It is the Uth or the sure sign between Yisrael the nation elect and almighty Yah. That's the only thing he tells us to Zachar to remember Hashivats. Shema keep it Chadosh. And so he gathered his nation of people scattered throughout the breadth of the earth under every kind of government. They're not going to be found by the perception or the intellectual uh, perversion of man. Just like they didn't know Yahshua. For the princes of this world, if they had known, they would have never impelled him at all. And so we see this progeneration of corrupt, distorted, vile teachings out of the gate of hell. So my prayers, y'all raise up the prophet, the true Nobi. We need a Nobi among his nation. These drug stores, pseudo fisher ones that call themselves prophets, I will not listen to them because they don't have a damn thing. I want to read something and our Zachin Yaramaya is going to teach preach, exalt the word. But it is amazing the simplicity of what Yah commands us. And yet we are a people that's obstinate. We are stubborn and rebellious. I want to read this. We come into Yah's house with our little comical activities. I don't like the pictures. I will suffer them for the moment. This is not a place of spectacular speculation it is a place where the shekha nothing but the worship of Yah. i have permitted it and there's only one that should shine and gleam among us nothing else there's nothing more vile than flesh is putrefied it is the bazaar full of nida, filthy minister rags of a woman. It stinks. It's one of the most, the most damnable things that one could even uh, associate with. That's why we must destroy it. We must omad. We must exterminate flesh and kill it. And the spirit that caused our flesh to operate in the manner that it does. He's going to set his house right by raising up his Naviim, the prophets. Not these damn drugstore boys. You buy them a, da a dime a dozen on YouTube. He's going to raise up Ish. What is an Ish? He's a man of strength and masculinity. He's a man of courage and character. So you wonder why the women don't even, the issue, don't even know what a man is. It's not to their fault. Hallelujah. I want to read something and I want to speak from just a portion for a moment. And our Zakin is going to come. Again, we greet you all that have joined us by the live visual and the live audio stream. Greetings in the precious name of your Shua Hamashiach. He is the only one that is anointed by Almighty Yah. Yeah. So damn all of their Christo, their Deus, and all of their Christ. For this one has come from the bosom of Yah. Yeah. I don't capitulate. I don't back down. I denounce their damnable gods and the spirit of their gods. But this is what Yah, he gives us a simple command here. I want to read this. And what man could speak this with more excellent than our 
the weeds are milk. The elect one, the one of God's bosom, the apple of his eye. Look what he says to us. I want to read this. And then I want to read something I believe that is vital, important. He tells us to praise, to baruch, barak, to fall in supplications, to bow down. He said, I want you to praise the Lord. We are an obstinate, stubborn, hubris generation. The vile and the wicked in the dens of darkness, they praise their gods. That's all they're praising their gods. And this is a generation that Yah calls a sottish, a stupid, ignorant generation. We're wise in our own conceit, but we don't have a damn thing. This is a simple command, isn't it? He says, I want you to brach, yeah, but yet they think their external appearances uh, brings about a, a magnificent excellence of Yah's truth. Uh, it's what he has written in the bosom, in the inward part, uh, in the shout of mind. He said, praise you, Yah. He said, praise our mighty Abba because he is superior. He said, I want you to praise him in his uh, oh hell. It is a hell in the tabernacle, in the place where he has placed his name. He says, I want you to praise him as you look at the creation of the firmaments of his Uza, his great mighty power. This is a damnable sick generation. We think we're going into the, into the kingdom? Listen. He said, praise him above all, Baruch Brachia, above all, for the great and mighty magnificent acts. He said, praise him according to his excellent uh, Gadol. Is he great? Is he great? They will praise the basketball team. They will wear the insignia of the ball club on the hats, the jackets. And yet we do not. The world doesn't know that we are the sons of Yisrael. Yet they do not see the insignia in our foreheads, the oath of the charge and the mitzvah of Yah. He said, praise him when uh, the sound of the shofar, the trumpet, blow that thing, little girl. Go ahead, blow it. Ah, blow the gun. Blow the gun. That's his command. And the stubbornness of Yisrael, he says, uh, praise him with the sorcery or the timbrels uh, and praise him with the harp. Uh, Come up here and bang on that for me. Come here. Come here and play that just a little bit. Nothing I can do. Come on. Just play me something. <clears throat> I don't care what it is. Just play something. He said, praise him. Baruch him. Barak him. Oh, we're going to sing to you. Hallelujah. Praise him on the heart. Praise you. Oh, ye Israel. Hallelujah, hallelujah. The reason we don't do it, the reason we don't respond, because he doesn't mean a damn thing to us. You can dress in your regalia, it doesn't mean a damn thing. So down, my heart. So down. The reason we don't do it is because we don't give a damn about Yah. You can say you love him, but this is a work or a mitzvah that he commands. You don't give a damn about Yah. You can be very verbose in your attire, your clothing. It doesn't mean a damn thing. This is of great substance. When he asks you to do something that is so simple to do, we defy that. We are a people that's rasha. We are wicked. And a wicked man defies the instructions of Yah. A wicked woman defies the instructions of Yah. And they are adamant because they have this, they have this hubris, this pride. Of course, they don't see it until one points it out. It's amazing we can gather and act foolish as hell and laugh and 
move, can't we? When it comes to Yah, we become very inactive. We are the people of Hayil, of the strength, the might, the power, the living substance of Torah. People on their job, they get animated. They act like jackasses and clowns for fools. They capitulate for the wicked. Not I. Not this man. He's been around for a while. It says praise him on the timbrel and also it says praise Yah. Oh, I will dance to Yah. I will dance to Yah. Hallelujah, hallelujah to Yah. Dance to Yah. Israel, dance to Yah. Oh, dance in the presence of Yah. Oh, Yah. He is great to Israel. Oh, dance before. Yeah. Let me say this. There's one thing when Yah begins to deal with me in all of my ignorance as a young 16 year old lad. 22, 23 years old, my heart was committed in ignorance. But I've never been ashamed because I was a dancing fool in the world. I was a dancing machine. I just could never find a woman that could dance. You understand? They were too intimidated and too afraid, and I could roll and rock. And so, even as my age began to creep up, I shall dance. Because I can do this even in, in, the, in my fragile nature. If we can't obey him over the smallest of things, you think you're going to obey? If he gave you a charge unto Yisrael, you're not going to do a damn thing. That's why we got all these little cliques today appeasing the flesh. I don't care about your flesh. Because I don't even like mine. How about that? Praise him with the timbrels and with dances. Praise him with the string instruments. Boom, 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 boom. He says, and on the organs, he said, praise him upon the loud cymbals. He said, praise him upon the high sounding cymbals. And then this. You cannot do it, Israel. That we meet. A profound statement here in Tehillim 150. Just hear it. Don't worry about turning to that. In verse 6, he says, let everything a kul. Listen. He uses the word kul. All, the whole, the much. Let everything that have haruach uh, you can't do because you don't possess. You have the damn Holy Ghost, lie and damn the Holy Ghost. Let it be damned into hell. I can talk bold and brazen that way because I understand definitive of words. I'm a student of words. Damn the Holy Ghost. He said, let everything that have the life of my mitzvah, let everything that have breath, praise Yah, Praise Yah. If you have not the life, you see what this whole has done to us? You see what the religious sector has done to us? It has propagated us as fools. Well, there are a group of those that call themselves Hebrews and say you don't even do this. This is stamped out. And the people have no life. They have no affection to greet one another. The men don't know how to embrace one another with a great love. And the women, frankly, don't give a damn about each other. How about that? But they have this religious, pompous attitude to, to think they have something. They don't have a damn thing. When you can't obey the simplest of yours command, you're worthless. And it makes no difference who you are. I speak to all Yisrael. He has no problem with the wicked. He has no problem with them. 
He has it with his people that live wickedly. And defies the order of Yah. And he's going to take them down to the gates of hell. He's going to kill your babies, mama. You too, daddy. He's going to kill you. He's going to maveth. He's going to destroy you. He's going to obad. He's going to show math. Where are the math? M-A-T-H. Everybody can do math. Can you do math, Sharia? Oh, look at that. But where are the math? Simply apply, where is the number of men of strength? Where are the men of strength? I find the Naha everywhere I go, boys. But I find no men. You're talking to me? Undoubtedly, you're a boy. Because if you're questioning the authenticity, the authenticity of your manhood, then there's something lacking in you, little boy. I'm going to bring Zarkane here in a moment. I ask him to let me say a few things. I remember as a young preacher in all of my ignorance, we rented a YMCA. I'm sorry, YW. In a very, what they will call a nice section of the city where we were there. And so there were those that would come to our service that lived there, young women. And I didn't spare them because of who they were. And so they reported me to the president of that facility. And she writes me this letter, I want to see you, sir. I have no problem with that because you haven't met, with, met and dealt with one like this, sir. You may have dealt with the little boys that were intimidated and fearful. I recall sitting down with that woman. And these are my words as I concluded. I said, I will let no one here, not even you, ma'am. Censor, I lease this facility from you. If you do not want us here, that's fine. But you will not censor me. You will not curtail my speech. I said, hell, the Ku Klux Klan. They're up city, city, Charlotte today. And they're crying, nigga, nigga, nigga. I said it like that. And she was thrown away. She didn't know how to respond. And I say, even their constitutional rights forbids one to curtail their speech. And I lean over a desk and I say, you think you're going to do that? Oh, 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 oh Reverend Roberts. I, 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 she got tied. Tongue. I say, you will not do that, ma'am. She said, well, we'll have a, 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 a meeting again. I knew she was cowardly. She didn't even have the courage to say, get out. She wrote me a letter and said, by this date, I want you out. That's all right. It was the will of Yah. Hallelujah. It was Yah's will. Yet we are a nation of people we don't stand for Yah. Isn't that simple what he told us to do? And yet we're so callous and hard. I will show you why. Because this is a wicked generation. We have not the abundance uh, the rub of Yah's great riches. We have the abundance of wickedness. That's what we have. We don't have the riches. His Oshia. The great riches of Yah that promotes a government that is strong and mighty. That produces a mind that brings about the wealth of Almighty Yah. They cause our little ones to grow with a nurturing. Isn't it amazing in the natural you see those children? You go somewhere like New York City. You can tell the rich Jewish children, can't you? And how their homes are nurtured. It's nurtured in the ultimate of wickedness. But there's a difference in the glean of their faces. There's a difference in the shot of their faces. And we as Yisrael should be the light of the world. We have the power, the testimony of Yahshua HaMashiach, and we don't have, frankly, a damn thing. We are full of rhetoric and talk. We are loquacious. We love to talk and to present this damn false image. I listen to words. I listen to what a man says. Can I say this? I want to read this before I sit down, Zakim. I was talking to someone the other day. And I was really talking to the individual about their health. 
and their weights. I said, if this is all you care for you, you can't give a damn about me. You don't care for me. If you don't love you, how can you love me, man? And so the conversation proceeded a little farther. I said, you cannot do one push-up. He said, no, sir, you're wrong. I said, if I was a man, that gamble. I would stake this entire place on it, which is not very valuable. Everything you see, probably, probably the land, we could get more for the land than the buildings. I would say $550,000. That's no money. And you probably could not get that unless it was marketed to some kind of organization for a boys' camp or something. You could not get any money for this. It is in a rural setting. There's no valuable components here at all. I said, but I guarantee you this. There's a reason I'm saying this. I said, if I was a man that gambled, I will lay the whole house on it. You cannot do one. You cannot. He says, you don't know me. I said, I know this. If I was a man that gambled and that you brought that proposition before me, I would lay this place on it. I'll take whatever odds you give me. Because I know we're coming out ahead. He said, when I see you, I will show you. He said, no, I will show you right now. Hold on for a minute. I said, you can't do one. He laid his cell phone down. He got down for about 45 seconds. He gets up, he says, Reak, I cannot do one. He says, Reak, I can't even get my arms out. I can't even do one. I can't do it. I said, as I said, I would lay the bank on that. Now that shows you that if this is how you intrigue you, you're going to intrigue me of the same attitudes. And the way we care for the bed of Yah is how we care for him. If we do not allow the furnishing. We have men that can teach those things so beautifully. All the furnishing of Shulomo's house and it doesn't produce one damn thing. It doesn't pro produce no excellence of the fear of Yah. And people leave that, oh, he talked about that. He, he said some things in, in the Aramaic or the Hebraic tongue. And oh, oh. <laughs> I will, man. Yet he did not deal with the hatta or the sins that defied the commands of Yah. We're filthy and we're dirty. Our hands are dirty. He commands us to live up. Ta, ta, ho. Hands, clean hands. Hands that are pure. Hands that have not played with sin and wickedness. Self-righteous. I hate it. I'm almost like Shaul. I, I would prefer going on, but I know that I have a little time. You understand? Because I love you. I don't say that, do I? Until nobody loved them because it is one of the most oxymorons one could say. It has no meaning at all. It doesn't mean a damn thing. So I don't tell you that. I will prove it to you. Mark a man that is told me that is perfect. For the end of that man is Shalom. Just mark me. And so if there's Shalom in me, you know that I care for you. I leave it like that. The whore has taught us well. The whore, the church, the religious machine has taught you well. Has taught you well. You see, you have your damn Baptist ways, your Pentecostal, your Church of God and Christ, your Patale. I know I'm a Methodist. You have your Catholicism. Your whiteism, your blackism, your Hebrewism, your gooey, your damn wickedness, that's what we have. 
of all people, the Hebrews should, man, the Shabbat should be a time of celebration and dancing and singing and running. At... Miriam said, give me the timbre. And she began to play on that thing. And the Baptists are yawned. Here our daughters today know how to play the role of a whore and a Jezebel and a damn slut. I said to one the other day, as people subscribe to our YouTube channel, and I would tend to go down and look at some, just see who they're subscribed to. And I clicked on this one the other day, and I said to my Isha and some of the, uh, I said, I clicked on this one, and these are what they call, quote, the ministers of T.D. Jakes, that conglomerate of a corporation. He is a conglomerate, a multi-million dollar conglomerate. You understand? I said it's not one man that didn't look effeminate. They act effeminate. They talk effeminate. They look effeminate. And they express them. Ooh, sounds effeminate. That's right. Come on. I will, man. That's right. Get me back in line. You understand? And they look effeminate. And you going to destroy every damn effeminate man. They look effeminate. Hell, their wives, I said to my issue, their wives got more manly. What an abomination that she serenades herself as a man in a woman's money. You all don't hear me. Come out and say, oh, yeah, yeah. What a Jezebel. What a filthy thing. You got women that got that damn mess in them and they still think, you all don't want me to get rolling. Don't roll here. Because I will cut your head off. You roll out there, you roll here, I will cut your rush off. You don't even have a rush. Man is the head of every woman, he is the rush. That's why daughters don't even know what it is the beauty of a wife. They haven't seen the strength and the beauty of a man. They don't know what a man consists of, his value, his strength. You got little weak boys today. And they don't know. And that's why they're given over to every kind of unclean, vile thing. They're dirty, they're sluts, and they're whores. You can call it what you want to. They're wicked. And the young boys today, they don't care about girls. They want other boys. They hang with boys. I was never that way. Not me. Hallelujah. Listen, can I say this? I told people I was almost 54 years old when I met or seen my natural father for the first time. Never seen the man all my life. Never. Never embraced the man. He just passed here recently. I was not going to be a part of their congregation of lies. I did not go. I was not going to be a part of their false superficial tears and crying. I was not going to be a part of it. And so when I walk into the presence of this man, he looks, or oh, I look just like him. He's taller than me. He was a big man. And the thing we had in common was this. The teeth, the gap. And his wife nearly cried that day because she says, go look at the picture of him when he was younger. We look like twins. You understand? Why am I saying that? I'm saying that because of all of that. My mother's hideous ways. And back then she truly abused me. The beatings. They were inhumane. But hell that did not cause me to be dysfunctional. It didn't cause me to act crazy. And that's a fact. Hallelujah. He says to me I have nothing to give you. I said to old man. When I say that it is an endearment to me. It is a regards. I said, oh man, 
I didn't come for anything. If you had it, I would not take it. I just wanted to meet the man. I'm satisfied. I'm all right. If I never see you again, I'm fine with that. I did not come to bring any guilt upon your conscience to say you were never there for what? I didn't do that. Did not charge him with anything. Just so mad, I just want to see. I'm, I'm glad that you allowed me to visit you. Just one time. Yet our Abba, he constantly, he's reminded of us. He cares for Yisrael. I'd rather have that association than that man, association that went to the grave. I'd rather him know me than that man to have ever known me. I'd rather have his embrace than for that man to ever have embraced me. And I'm not sick, I'm not dysfunctional, because I care for Yisrael. Yeah. Hallelujah. Not just in words, my actions and my deeds. And that's the way men must set the pattern and the example. I got married at a young age, 35 years ago, over 35. I did not know how to love a wife, because I was never taught. But I saw men that were intimate with their spouses, and I watched them, and I emulated them. And I did what they did. That it was fruitful and productive. So don't tell me that, Yisraya. But a man desires to understand, to learn. And that's why we need the math. There will be few math, few men. You get a mighty man, I don't care, 10,000 can come against him. They will all stop when they get to his presence. When a man finds a virtuous woman, a woman that is high ill, she has the strength, the maturity, the excellence, of Yah. Her father has taught her the beauty of a wife because she has seen the beauty of that with him interacting with his mother. So when a man finds a wife, uh, he has found a great jewel because her price is far above rubies. He has no need for two, three, four. What in hell are these poor crazy people think they have two or three wives? They're stupid. They elect what they want to out of the Torah and disregard what is not appeasing to them. And so when a man finds a wife of that excellence, uh, he will have no need of spoil. He doesn't need another woman. He doesn't go out beyond that. He is satisfied. He has much. She's a woman of strength. She's a woman of beauty. She's a woman of character. She works with her hands. She's a woman that is diligent. He doesn't need to go outside of the parameter of that. And he can live faithfully with that woman. And he will love her. Hallelujah. Because when a man finds a wife, he finds an excellent, a, a tough thing. And you said, because you've been so diligent in your approach, your passion for me, your desire, your love for me. That I give you this wife, and not only that, but I will give you favor. Yah gives that man favor, Yisrael. You are sure it's going to have a beautiful bride. I said again, he's going to have a beautiful bride. This is a nation that sells our daughters. And I'm not going to stop saying this. Your daughters are the dark hue of skin. They sell you for not a damn thing. They diminish any kind of value you have in the damn superficial thing you call beauty. It's not beautiful. I will, man. You're not beautiful. 
There is not a tifra of ya. It is not the tifra of ya. When one possesses that tifra, then all, all men and women, it is a great honor and a great regard for them. So our minds are so deluded, they're trying to, uh, trying to uh, mock your minds that you present an image that is far from the truth of Yah. And thinking land on your back is a great accomplishment. It's not. Marriage is honorable and the bed undefiled. Can I say this? Just give me a moment. I remember as a young ignorant man, and I'm still, that is a superlative, that should always be a part of my characteristic. I'm ignorant. I remember as a young preacher preaching, and I said that they all are whores that go outside of the ram of the marriage. So this one young preacher said, hold up now. I say she's no different than if she sleep with ten men. That one is just a ten men whore. And the one that sleep with you, she's just a one woman's whore. A one man's whore. She's a whore. And makes no difference. Well, I, no, no. Yah says marriage is honorable and the bed is undefiled. Any time a man honors a woman, he will sustain and abstain himself. Any time a woman honors Yah, she will abstain and sustain herself. And not burning in this frivolous loss that doesn't grant any damn thing. I'm talking today. He grants unto us this abundance of riches that we walk in the abundance of sin and wickedness. As a young fool, I knew it was right to marry this woman and didn't even have the money to go marry her. I'm making $2.65 an hour. But as a young man, Yah was dealing with me greatly. And her mother sent me $30. And I went and we were betrothed. You know, I've lived honorably with her. No, no other woman. Now, I'm not saying that to boast. I'm saying that to show us, Yisrael. Is Yah faithful with us? Yes. He knows no other nation but us. Yes. He is faithful to no other nation but us. Yes. He could choose and elect all the nations he wants, but he elected one. Yes. Just one. And you don't have to be a fine stud of a man to be a dog today. You understand? You don't have to be no fine stud. Nah, you don't have to be that. I will, man. You don't have to be no fine stud to do that. Be that big around and do that. I will. Yah has not sought out any other companionship. He is betrothed. Just like Yosef and Miriam. And there's a constitution of that. We do what they do in Hollywood, whole world. Men living with women and women with men. Men with men and women with women. That's what we do. We do like Horwood. That which is highly esteemed among the world, it is an abomination. It is a to eba. It is a, it is a rag that is a nida rag. Nida is the rag of a woman that after she ends a monthly administration, she plays with it and make tea with it. What woman does that? No woman. That's how far we become. We serenade ourselves with this pomposity of damn hypocrisy. He's going to rip us to hell. That's why he's not just going to take us to a zah. But it is a zara. Not just through tribulation. But it is one that is so hellish that the mind cannot even comprehend. He must reveal it. 
is beyond the scope of the ability for the mind to digest, even to comprehend uh, the tyranny that he's going to lay out. Uh, keep serenading like a Jezebel, uh, you pompous faggot thing of a boy. Cannot go around. Torah of ya. I don't give a damn about your money. You don't sin any anyway. So damn your money. Cannot go around. Torah of ya. Oh, you cannot get around. You are sure how much here you cannot get around. The Torah of ya. The first order of a true prophet, I am no prophet. I'm a messenger of truth, simple truth. His first order is to tear the damn house down. Tear it up, knock the damn windows out, kick mama out, grandmammy, kick, kick, them, kick them out. Tear the damn house down. Tear it up. Oh, he cuss, hypocrite, get out of my face. You don't even know what Kala is. You speak things to each other and you curse and you think because I say, damn, you're ignorant. Yeah. And these are our brightest intellectuals. You understand? They're dumb. They're stupid. Look at the world today. Look at it. But my vernacular and the punctuality and my speech is just impeccable. You don't even know what you're saying. So he cussed. All right, I cussed then. How about that? Granny would say he cussed up something. Well, I cussed, all right? Until we began to obey faithfully, obedience, wisdom is principle. But in all of our garden, we need to be now. We need to be now. The ability to discern what is of Yah and what is not of Yah. But in all our getting, we need the understanding of Almighty Yah. Well, let me ask you a question. So if I answer it not according to your damnable silly perception, what you've been taught, uh, he's wrong. No, you're wrong. Because you would not ask me the question if you did not have, if you had security with what you already have. I don't ask questions because I don't need to. I don't ask questions. That's me. You haven't learned one damn thing by asking questions. That's why we're in the shape we're in. We ask these questions and we're still in bad shape, are we not? We're broke, we're hungry, we're sick. We're impoverished. We have no spiritual life in us. And that is what this time, that Yisraya, they came from every nation to Yerushalayim. Our jobs have us bound. The landlord got you. The drug lord, the pharmaceutical got you bound. The doctors got you bound. Every damn thing. We have no confidence in Yah. We have no imuna. We're fearful to die because sin. You're fearful to die. Now I want you all, let me say this to us all, you that are gathering, when I'm preaching, don't be sitting there eating, all right? Put the damn ham bone down, all right? And you don't come into Yah's house chewing damn gum and eating candy, all right? That is so damn disrespectful and so wicked. You go in front of... Listen to this. You'll come in a minute. You think that I would go in, in front of one that, uh, that's interviewing me for a job and check, check, check. And yet we come to Yah's house with no regard. We are, we are stupid people. We are saltish. I don't take it back. If it's you, get it out of your damn mouth and eat the bread of life, all right? We have no regard for Yah. If the police officer stopped you, you would swallow it in all. You're fearful of getting a good ticket. Let me read this, Zakin, and I will bring you, all right? Is that all right? Oh, I'm not going to preach today, but there's something I want to say, all right? There are a few folks listening. There are a few folks in there. You know, let, let me say a few things. He's going to bring us an excellent truth. 
Hallelujah. He's going to bring us an excellent truth and an excellent knowledge. But I want to read this quickly. Just hear me. I'm not going to even tell you where it's from. Just hear it. We must hear. When you tell a child to do something, you intend for them to comprehend, to understand, and fashion their activities according to that command. We don't do what Yah commands us. When He commands us to do, it is Asa. Asa, it is to fashion our minds and to, to accomplish the instructions or the mandate according to His constitution. That is what Asa is. You got to learn his ways. Our ways are filthy, Israel. Yeah. Sinful and deplorable. We must learn the ways of Yah. We must love Yah. Yeah. You have no love for Yah unless you keep, you shema, you guard. Like a warrior, his mitzvah, his commandment. And we got damn trash in us. We have learned from uh, the black Hebrews, the white Hebrews, the Jews. Uh, at all, it is damn trash. From the Baptist, from the Methodist, the Pentecostal. Uh. I love to challenge men in Torah. You pick that part out to do, but what about this? It is a hook, a statue. What about this part? Well, let's go to this part. Now, what about that? Oh, come on back here. What about this? What about that? Yah raised up the Nobi, the prophet. Strong men. Strong men. That they will be strong among Yisra'ya and protect the house. Protect their minds, their leba. Secure knowledge in their inward parts. And to bring forth out, you know, Yah, he didn't even trust me with you. He trusted to write to Hatab, his Torah, his Brit Hadassa Berit, his renewed covenant in your heart by writing it. He put it in your inward part. He wrote it. And when you hear the Ru'ach HaChodas utters what Yah commands out of his messengers, it will draw from that well. He hasn't left us like to be overtaken by the beasts and the scavengers to die. He has not left us that way. But the world has messed us up that we don't even know a true messenger. It's almost like a woman says, all men, they're not worth a damn. You filthy whore, how do you know that? How old are you, 32? Hell, you slept with every man to know that they're not worth a damn? I will, man. They all just like. How many have you slept with to know that they're all alike? 5,000, 10,000? Women ain't worth a damn. They all. Hold up, boy. First of all, you have never confronted a woman. How many women have you known? Can I ask you a question? What about your mammy then? She wasn't worth a damn either. Well, no, no, no. Well, okay, then that all women are not like that. Can I go around the door of Yah? Yah, bless your messengers wherever they are. You either slutty slut to sleep with every man to know they're all not worth a damn, or you're a flat out liar. You didn't even know what a man was. That's why you chose that. That has brought you agony. Real man, first thing he's going to generate is a little fear. And for the moment, she'll be afraid to speak to him because he, he, he doesn't look like the rest of them. That's a fact. When a man sees what he thinks is an attractive woman, he, he becomes intimidated. Oh, these cowards. All right. He becomes a little intimidated. Well, do you think he has a little sharpness over her? He doesn't. But if he thinks she's very attractive. Hallelujah. You all can sit here in your hypocrisy and try to negate these factors. 
and try to relegate them to an unconsciousness of your perception. But it is a fact. That's why Yahshua doesn't mean anything to us because he doesn't have the kind of beauty or the kind of calmness that you expect him to have. He's more beautiful than that. Let me read this quickly and Zakin is going to come. Forgive me, Zakin, but I must read this. I want to read this. Out of the bosom of a prophet, I will tell you a little history of him as he spoke Unto Yisra'ya, there was great intermarriages and integrating themselves um, among the populace of the world. And so we like popular ideas. We like pop culture, don't we? That's what pop culture is. It is the popular, the most romantic ideas. We like that, don't we? They talk about pop culture. They talk about hip-hop, the pop culture, the pop singing, uh, if that had been Hammond Hill rapping or no, Jazzy Z, I guess. Uh, what's the little dirty one's name with all the tattoos? Lil Wayne, this freak. You would have had the most sanctimonious ones up. Oh, 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 Shake it up, boom, boom. Shake it back. You would have done the monkey dance. You hypocrites. And every last one of you got a different one too. You know, on the continent of Africa, you look at certain tribes. The dances have not changed for hundreds of years. Everybody do the same dance. Only in this buck happy generation in this wicked country. In this filthy nation here. They do some of everything. They get buck happy. You understand, Yisraya? Hear this. And so Ezra, he speaks, he says this. I want you to hear this. This is just some confirmation and some strength. As he speaks unto Yisra'ya, a people that had negated even the Baal of Yah, the house, the Mikdash. We have negated this house. We don't take care of the bosom of Yah. We don't take care of the Baal of Yah. Our Bodies, it is the living bayats of Yah. Yeah. It is where the power of the Ruach HaKodesh dwell. And we frankly don't give a damn. So as he perceives and watch among Yisrael Yah, this great strive to write as Yah imparted this into his bosom. He says... He tells us to abide, uh, and he says, you all need to be very quiet, uh, or raga, uh, just be quiet, to settle and rest in Yah. Yah says, oh my people, because your Shabbaton, your rest will come, the day of your great rest uh, will come, your Shabbaton, where you rest in the comfort of Torah, you rest in the assurance of the mandates of Yah, because he has spoken it. Is he mighty? Did he not speak and the world or the stars uh, and breath from his loins cause life? He says to you, Yisra'ya, we are the parents of Yisra'ya. He says, I want you to cool or nourish, to sustain. To make sure there's plenty of nourishment. I want you to nourish your children. Oh, you tough nurse. He says, then I want you to establish or to cum their feet, to cause their feet to walk the halakh, the pathway of Yah, in truth, in Torah, in the commands of Yah. The parents are not raising their children or cum their sons and their daughters uh, to walk in the disciplines of Torah. Cause their feet to walk the steps of a Sadiq man. They're ordered by Yah. He orders the steps of a Sadiq man. And he commands us to nourish our feet in the walk of the way, the derach that Yah commands us to walk in, Yisra'ya. Yeah. As for the servant whom I have given you, you tell me, Yah, give us those that we call Ebed? Yah says, I have no thon, I've given, I have bestowed, I have granted that. For whom the servant, Ezra, Nehemiah, 
I have given unto you, yeah, did not Yoshua HaMashiach, before he ascended, he descended, and he gave gifts unto men. He did not give one damn authority of that gift unto one woman. And any woman that calls herself that, she's a Jezebel. She is of the spirit of Isabel. Just like Yah says, Yahshua says in Revelation, Gilyana, unto the whole house of Tyra, Tyra, he said, I'm going to kill your damn babies. I'm going to kill you, whore. I gave you time to repent and to make shub, and you didn't do a thing. He said, I'm going to kill you, and I'm going to put all those that sleep with you, I'm going to kill them all. He's going to kill them all. You understand? He has not given the woman that authority in the head. That came by this wicked mentality of this nation. We got rights. I'm a woman. I put on pants like you. I dress like you. I smoke a cigarette like you. I smoke a cigar like you. I, not, I even train my voice to talk like you. I flop my titties out so I have a chest like you, Heifer. I'll knock you out. You can handle me. So they've taken the feminality of a woman away. They act like damn bull daggers and men. Who wants that? I'm glad my Isha, her mother, taught her to be dainty and to act like a woman. And I'm glad of that. She taught her that. Well, I like that too. This is how a woman acts. She walks this way. She does this. And she didn't walk that way, I would kick her out. No use arguing with me because you can't win. But she wins every time. True. All right. No use of doing that. You get quiet. That's the way it should be. She should win every time. He commands us to deal with a woman according to knowledge, knowing that she is the weaker vessel. She can't go out there and bust it like I do. She can't lift up three, four hundred pounds like me. I can do it. She can't do it. That's a fact. She doesn't have the masculinity of strength and power. She doesn't even have the inertia force behind her hips to roll like me. And her intellectual knowledge I will break it down. I don't care who the woman is. I don't care what her degree of expertise is. So what? We'll deal with the facts of life, truth. Yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah. As for the servant whom I have given you, uh, there shall not one of them perish or, or bad. They will not go astray. They will not be destroyed. They will not be eliminated. They will not be annihilated. Uh, they will not be eviscerated. Uh, he said, my servants, uh, you may kill the prophet, but the voice uh, is going to cry. You may kill the messenger, but it's going to cry out among the nation. Uh, he said, for I will require from them, uh, from among you, your numbers, your direction, your passion, your desire. I will ask them, uh, who are the true seed of Yisra'ya? Who are those that are numbered in my house? He commands us to be not goods. Don't be weary. Don't get too distressed or grieved with anxieties. He said, don't be anxious about much. Don't do that. He said, for when the day of tribulation, please hear this. He said, when the day of tribulation, when there is war and agony upon a nation of people, the tribulation is not meant for the world. Is meant to try the eduth, the eda, the testimony of Yeshua HaMashiach. They're going to do wickedly and they're going to live wickedly. They're going to eat and drink. They're going to buy. They're going to sell. And they're not going to repent. It is for his nation that he has granted much and we don't give a damn. He has sent his son of his bosom he has exposed his Torah in flesh and caused it to be tried by the ultimate powers of hell we denounce that and we think we're getting by he said when tribulation and then he uses the word anguish or sarah great 
agony of the mind, the conscious cannot comprehend, one cannot think, one cannot function, one cannot operate unless one has the mind, as Shaul said, let the same mind that was in your sure Hamashiach, it must be in us, let it, permit it, allow it. We have the mind of the world. The mind of Hashatan, we are against Yah. If we love Yahshua, say, if you love me, do what I command you. So when Yah commands us to praise Him, is that Him talking to us? We need to get back to the basics. Those that are listening, those that were here, we need to get back to that. And so we got boys today thinking that they're talking something that's extremely powerful, and they're not saying anything. I say, this is people get excited about that? Wow. He also says, uh, he said, these anguishes shall come uh, and others shall weep. They shall be sorrowful. Uh, but that's what he says to Yisrael. Through all of that now, he says, tribulation and anguish. Uh, he says, but you shall as a nation of people, you shall as my people, you shall smack. You know, when Yah tells us to rejoice, when he uses the word saw, so, S-A-W, so mach. He is saying, I want you to do it with one of the most pompous, arrogant attitudes. You go somewhere with somebody dad say, get back. Everybody like, look at him go. Look at big daddy. Look at fat daddy. Roll. Roll with the drum. You have never seen that I have in my days. Let everybody get back and say, oh, big daddy, go on and play big dog. Look at that daddy. Roll it. Come on. Rock the house, baby. And he's not doing anything, but he gets crazy. He gets crazy. He gets arrogant. He gets belligerent. He becomes sacrilege. He does it in a way that everybody, whoa, <laughs> whoa, go, baby. That's what Yah says when he says, Shamach. do it arrogantly, haughtily. It's almost like a haughty woman when she walks you up. You stink. He said, I want you to do it with a haughty attitude. One that's arrogant. One that makes people look and say, look at her. Look at him. It doesn't take all that. She said, it takes more than that. Words are key, Yisrael. It's like a mother telling a son, you're not worth a damn. And that's all he hear. You tell me that doesn't affect this life. That's all I heard as a young lad. You're not going to be a damn thing. That's all right. I'm glad I'm not anything too. I am so glad. I call myself a little farmer. Folks, what do you do, man? I say, man, I farm. I grow food. Run cows and run goats. And dig ditches and spread manure. I'm so glad. I'm glad, yeah. How about that? For the riches of men can only do what I do, eat, pass it out, and lie down. That's it. And breathe Yah's air. I want to close here with this. It's, it's vitally important to hear this. He says, but when these things, things come, but you shall be rejoice, Yisrael. And he says, you're going to have robe, you're going to have abundance. You can't buy or sell unless you have the mark of the beast. They don't even know what they're saying. The earth contaminated with nuclear waste, what are you going to buy? The cars down, the ponds, are, the fish are dead, the stench are you're going to use some silver. You are a dumb jackass to tell the people those lies. What are you going to do, man? Yah says that's why he wants us to rejoice now. So in that hour we, we, we shall show nach. We're going to do it arrogantly. Baby, I don't need no cornbread and rice. I got some. I got it abundantly. He says he's going to do it with rope. It's going to be plenty. It's going to be rich. It's going to be with muchness. It's going to be overflowing up. You see, it's the simple things that gets us to the place. It is the simple recipes that taste best. 
I said to Aksimion, I said, what about the lamb yesterday? He said, to, I said, I had one that was honey or, uh, or uh, I put mustard sauce on it. Uh, he said, I like the one that's plain, just, just simple. A little rosemary and a little garlic. I said, you're so accustomed to eating it that way, so you can't, you can't taste the flavors or the nuances of it. But I understand that those that do a lamb with nothing on it, and it tastes excellent. We are people that's a hybrid people. We like hybrid things. Give it to me raw. No pretenses. He said, but you should have room. Much. Exceedingly abundantly. In the midst of Sarah. Great trials, agonies of one's mind. But he commands us what to do to rejoice. Listen now. We're his people, are we not? Can I read a little further there? Can I read a little further? A few more verses in close? Okay, let me read. He says, the heathen, or the heim, the heathen nations shall envy you. Are they envying us today? Are they envying you because uh, you have on your Hebraic attire? They shall envy us because of our mishra, our government. Our government and our constitution is so powerful. And so strong, they look upon your work, your labor, and say, what a magnificent thing. I haven't seen nothing like that. There's an order. You look at their children. You look at the wives and the husband. You can tell the wives love their husbands because they understand the very nature of his labor and how he labors to maintain the security and the assurance of the house. Today's women don't give a damn. And the men are as sorry as they come. It is the truth, young Ark. And the heathens shall envy you, but they shall not be able to do nothing against you, saith Yah. No weapon that is formed against Yisrael is going to prosper. Every tongue that rise up in judgment against his people, it shall be condemned. But everyone is not his people. Because Ezra was dealing with one content of a people, you have mixed yourself. That he even commanded you go, now read the book of Ezra. You go, let's count those. Uh, you have allowed the women of Yehuda or Yisra'ya to marry men outside of Yah's commands. We are people of great strength. Not because of the way we look, but because of what Yah has said. How about that? That doesn't mean you women wear pants like a man, all right? That's my job, all right? He just says, my yard, my yard, my hand, my hand, my strength, shall, uh, my strength shall, uh, so high, shall cover you, as her shatan says. It shall be the hedge, it shall be the fence around you, I shall surround you, it shall encamp about you, it shall over, overtake you. Hashatan said, everyone knows that you have uh, a Saharaun, Ehob. He said, I will be your defense. I will defend for you. I will fight your battle, Yisrael. Come on. Yeah. He said, I will cover you uh, so that your children shall not see hell. I will cover you so your children will not go to hell. Yah said, I will cover you so your children will not go to hell. Oh, no babies go to hell. Oh, that's what the Baptist told you, that lie. When he went down, Korodei, Tan, and Abaram, he put them all in hell. He said to those with the ink horn, yes, get Mark, I don't give a damn, begin in my house. Kill mama, kill babies, kill them all. He used the word taff. The one that sucked the titty of the mother. Hell, look how they have made you hate your babies that you don't even give them the damn titty anymore. You don't even give your baby your damn titty. When I go out there and watch some cows in the field, they give the baby that titty. I watch the goats, they say, come to these others. 
I watch the sheep, they say, suck my titty. And they have made you hate your children. You so damn much. You won't even flop. When I was a lord, I would see it. They would flop the titty out right there in the Baptist whole house. It was not something that was abnormal. It was a norm. It was a capacity to love. When I was in Africa, give me one more minute, please. When I was in Africa, I was reading from Shirem, Ecclesiastics in Kenya. And so the women, when they come to the tabernacle, they fuck the titty out, man. They didn't need no haggis. It didn't mean nothing to me. And the baby sucked the titty. They have dehumanized the woman today because she thinks she got titties. You silly heifer. Cows got teats. Titties. And I remember preaching when I came to the part where Shalomo said, you know, I will enjoy your breast. So Pastor Kimani, he spoke Kiswahili. He stopped. And I turned and looked at him. I said, man, you say what I say. You understand. I don't want you to add one word. You say it the way I say it, man. You understand? That's what I said. So he looks at me befuddled, like, what do I do? I, I, I don't know what to do. And then he responded, he says to me, Riak, in Kaswahili, there is no word for breast. I said, all right then, what is that thing she got in the baby's mouth right there? Of course, everyone laughed when they saw that. And, she was giving the baby suck from a titty. When I said that, she just, ooh, she got so ashamed. I stopped that. I say that thing. That's what he enjoyed, that, the titty. That's how they say it. It kids Swahili, titty, titty, titty. So they have taken the beauty of a woman's breasts and made it a spectacle, a spectacle for everyone to look at. And she thinks she's holding something. It's nothing, baby, but some fat glob. That's all it is, some fat there. He put them there for you in your youth, for your husband man to enjoy your breast in his youth. And you want the world to enjoy them. Closing here. I don't try to make friends. I have a friend in your shoe, Hamashiach. I know I'm his friend. He said, if you do what I command you, you keep the Torah of Yah, you obey, then you are my friends. You are my re'ah. You are my re'ah. You're my friend, that he loves me because the command says that you love your neighbor, your rea, as you love yourself. Hallelujah. So I know he loves me. I know he loves me. Forgive me, Zakim, but please. He says in this reading, he says, I want you to shemach, rejoice, because we know that nothing shall touch us. And we don't rejoice insanely. With the abundance of the assurance of Yah. That's what this meeting is about. The abundance of Yah. We have brought in the harvest. We have gathered in the much. I was in the garden of the morning. It was raining. And man, this doesn't mean nothing to me. All oh, the cabbages are getting big. The broccoli, the cauliflowers. Ah! That part, I patted a little too early this year. But all of this beautiful kale and all of these radishes uh, and all of these nice things that I love to eat. Uh, sure, it didn't bother me one bit. And I went to rolling too. No, I'm not waiting for you all. I'm gone. I want to get this done. Hallelujah. He said, rejoice and be joyful. Oh, you Imma, you mother of Yisrael, the mothers uh, are supposed to mother and teach. It is your place to maintain the law of Yah in the bosom of the sons and the daughters. And the mothers today, they're as crazy as they come. They want to be young, they want to act silly. I'm not going to stop saying that they're mean as hell. They have no great love because they've never been taught love. They don't know how to interact with nobody. They're so damn moody, they're up one moment, they're down the next, they're twisted one moment, and they're flipping and flopping the next morning. And yet he gives a great beautiful charge to the Ema here. He says unto them, O you Ema, with your children, 
You have mothered, you have brought many. In a secular community in the 60s, we had Emma, we had mothers that cared uh, about every child and what's out there, every child, uh, and every child respected, uh, and every child honored, uh, and every child uh, watched themselves because they knew there were eyes on them, uh, and no child disrespected them. None, Yisra'ya. No! And they pull you to the side and spank your buttocks. Yeah. You didn't fight against that. Yeah. Yeah. He says, I want you to remember your children that sleep. Because I will bring them out of the hiding place of the earth, out of this captivity, out of the darkness. Those that the forefathers knew that this truth will come to. He said, I'm going to bring them out. I'm going to retrieve them and bring them out. Of the place of the earth. And so he said, I'm going to show hasit. I'm going to show mercy and kindness and tenderness and great love. I'm going to show that mercies uh, to them. Yah says, for I am full of hasit. I am merciful. I am loving. I am kind. I am tender to my people. And although you shall experience that, I am on your side. I have my hands covering you. I watch over you. I will protect you. I will so I will defend for you. I will put the city of refuge around you. You don't have to run. You run to the bosom of your show. You're in the city of refuge. You don't have to fear as the enemy pursue you, Yisrael. Hallelujah. And then he says this. Embrace your children. Love them and show them the truth. Is that you're embracing us today? He said, until I come, and I will show mercy on them. He says this, for my will, for the living will, for the mind and the waters. He said, for my will runs over, and my free unmerited pardon shall not fail. This is what Yah speaks to us, doesn't he? Isn't that beautiful? But let me show us, us. I... Ezra, the messenger of Yah, received your charge, this charge, this sava, this command of Almighty Yahweh. When I was on Mount of the Hill Horeb, I received it. I acknowledge it. I heard it. That I should go to Yisrael. But when I came to them, they ma'as, they rejected, they despise, they abhorred, they hated, they had disdain, they cast what I said away, but they rejected me and they refused ma'as, the mitzvah, the commandments of Yah. That's us. I didn't say it. Yah said it. We refused to obey. We will not obey Yah. Love. Aha. Your neighbor. You don't know how to love. Watch others that do know. As you love yourself. And when you love yourself. I know your love is sure. You don't have to tell me you love me. They do that in the whole house. Oh I love everybody. Liar. You filthy liar. You dirty liar. Yah knew you couldn't and did not have the ability to love everyone. So he said, love your ri'a, your neighbor, your friend, like you love yourself. And when you learn how to love them, they can extend a little bit. I learned how to love my friend, and I can learn how to love him. Love him next. And love him. Love him and love him and love him. You see how this wicked religion has? Love is a sensitivity of great expression of emotion. A man says to his wife, come give me a hug, woman. She embraces him and squeezes him. That's what I want. Ah, lay it here. We've lost all sensitivity. May the riches of Yah rest upon you all. You that have joined us, come on, Azokhin Yaramaya. Toda, hallelujah. That's all right. You just added the fire to the flame, Ray. I'm ready to roll. Nothing to apologize about. Hallelujah. But the abundance of Yah 
He gives an abundance. That's his character. That is his nature. Even the Torah speaks about how he said leanness in the souls of who? Of Yisrael. But even in the leanness, there was abundance. Does he not send also his blessings, what we call the blessings? Well, they're just, they're just tough things, or what we call good things. Now, he also sends kala, or the curse, and a bless. And the, and also, as he sends the blessing, Israel, Yah. Yahweh, he's above much and of abundance. And it's important that we understand that, Israel, Yah. We cannot reject what we want to hear from the Torah and then receive that which sounds uh, uh, like something we like or something we want. It's all the same, Yisrael. It's all the same. So what I would like to speak about tonight, t this morning, is concerning a false balance. It has a lot. It has much to do with the abundance of Almighty Yahweh. Because if we say we are Yisrael, and we have the riches, the wealth of Yahweh, the Amunah Abba Yahweh, we have his great understanding, and yet we do not walk after the Torah of Almighty Yahweh, then we are liars. That's a false balance. And Yahweh says that a false balance is what? It is an abomination. So we cannot stand as the people of Almighty Yahweh and walk in abominations, walk in Kala, cursing Abba Yahweh, not walking according to the Torah and his misvah. I do want to start by, if you would turn with me to Deuteronomy chapter 28. And again, we're still dealing with the abundance of the blessings of Almighty Yahweh. Hallelujah. While you're turning there, there's something I do want to read concerning Yahweh setting the slackness unto Israel. Hallelujah. It says in Psalms 106, it says that in Psalm 106, verse 11, it said that the waters covered their enemies, and there was not one of them left. Then believed they his words, and they sang praises. But, it says, they soon forgot his works, and they waited not for the counsel of Almighty Yahweh, for the leading of the Ruah, for the Torah of Almighty Yahweh. But lusted exceedingly. Don't we find ourselves lusting? Our desire is not towards the Torah of Almighty Yahweh, or to the things of Abba Yahweh, or the muchness of his, the abundance of his blessings. But we find ourselves lusting after the creature comforts, after the things of the world, the things that please the flesh. But lusted exceedingly in the wilderness. Are we not in the wilderness? It's not the world raging. It's not wild out there, Yisrael. And tempted Yahweh, it says, in the desert. And what did he do? It says he gave them their request, what they wanted, what they lusted after. It wasn't the Torah of Yah. It wasn't of the abundance, the abundance of the faithfulness of the Amun of Almighty Yahweh. And what did he do? He gave them what they desired, what they wanted, flesh. But he sent leanness to their nephesh, to their souls, that they didn't prosper in the things of Almighty Yahweh. That the muchness of Yahweh had no weight to them. It meant nothing to them. Yahweh sent leanness in their nephesh. And what we find in this generation and this hour is the leanness amongst the house of Yisrael. Why? Because it's not the things, that, it's not the things of Yah that we desire. It's not the things of Yahweh that we truly want, Yisrael. So what does he do? He has certain leanness among the house of Yisrael. Why? Because we have not walked after the Torah as we should have. We have not obeyed the statutes, the commandments of Almighty Yahweh as we should, Yisrael. So that's why we see such a dearth, such a leanness in this hour. And it's sad. And it's sad. Well, all we have to do is walk according to the Torah and according to the Mishvah of Almighty Yahweh. It is not hard. It's iniquity that makes it hard for us to walk. It's the transgression. It's walking contrary to the Torah of Almighty Yahweh that makes this walk in Yahshua HaMashiach so difficult. Deuteronomy chapter 28, verse 1. I read some of this um, after the message that Zarkane um, Abash taught us 
on Friday, just yesterday, Israel. And I want to continue on in that. Deuteronomy chapter 28, verse 1. Concerning the abundance of Almighty Yahweh. And it came to pass, if you shall listen, what? What does it say there? Deuteronomy chapter 28, verse 1. We shall listen diligently. Listen. So, is it, uh, do we just take out what we want to hear and what we like to hear? Or what we think is applicable to our um, walk, Israel? He said to listen diligently to every word, every aspect, every detail. To the voice of Yahweh, our sovereign ruler. To what? To observe. To watch. To meditate. To observe and to do all his commandments, which he had commanded you this day. Today. Did we not hear the commandments of Yahweh? The Mishvah of Almighty Yahweh. We should do all according to what Yahweh has commanded us this day. That Yahweh your Almighty will set on you, will set you on high above all the nations of the earth. Verse 2. And all these blessings shall come upon you and overtake you. The Barakiah. The much of Almighty Yahweh. If you shall what? Listen to the voice of Almighty Yah, your Abba. He says this, if we listen, if we hearken, if we do what was commanded on us this day, Israel, Yah. He says, bless, Barak, shall you be in the city, and Barak, blessed shall you be in the field. Blessed shall you be in the fruit of your body, and in the fruit of the ground, and in the fruit of your cattle, the increase of your cattle, and the flocks. Of your sheep. Blessed shall, you, shall your basket be in your store and your storehouse. Blessed will you be when you come in, and blessed will you be when you go out. Verse 7. Yahweh shall cause your enemies to rise up against that rise up against you to be smitten before your face. They shall come out one way and flee before Yisrael in seven ways. Yahweh shall command the blessing upon your storehouses and in all that you set your hand to do. Is that what we want, Yisrael? Do we want all that we set our hand to do, set our hands upon to be blessed? That we maintain gain and not leanness? That we do not lack concerning the promises of Almighty Yahweh? And he shall bless you in the land which Yahweh your Amba gives unto you. In verse 9, he says, Yahweh will establish you a Kodesh people to himself. Has he not elected a people? Kodesh, set apart, not like any other Gohin or any other nation. As he has sworn to you, if you shall what? Keep. The commandments of Yahweh, your Abba, that is key, Israel. We must keep his commandments. We cannot have a false balance. We can't say that we have the blessings of Almighty Yahweh and we do not walk after the Torah, the Mishra of Almighty Yahweh. You cannot be a liar and claim the blessings of Almighty Yah. You can't, wisdom is, is a great blessing to have for Almighty Yahweh. Wisdom. How do you measure the wisdom of Yah? Yet he gives unto Israel without measure. It cannot be weighed. I will talk about the weight also. It cannot be measured. It's not portioned out, but it's, re- it's, with, it's without restraint, Israel. Of Yahweh your Almighty, and walk in his ways. We must walk in his ways, not our ways, Israel. Our ways have gotten us into trouble. It gets us into trouble all the time. So let us walk in his ways. Verse 10. And all the people of the earth shall see that you are called by my his shame, my name, the name of Yahweh. And they shall be afraid of you. Afraid. There will be a measure of, of fear and, and intimidation. They shall tremble. 
at the sight and at the presence of Yisrael and at the name of Almighty Yahweh. And Yahweh shall make you plenteous and tough of the fruit of your body, even the puri, even the fruit of your body, Yisrael, Yisra, and in the fruit of your cattle, your possessions, and the, the fruit of your ground, and the land which Yahweh swore to your avats to give unto you. Don't you want to abound, Yisrael? We should be a people and a nation that flourish. Anything we put our hands to, even the zira, the seed of our body, flourish before Almighty Yahweh. Did not he say that the zira, Yisrael, would be as numerous as the sands of the sea, Yisrael? Verse 12. Yahweh shall open unto you his tough treasure. I want the tough treasure of Almighty Yahweh. Even in the judgment of Amaya, there's tough treasure. But we don't want to be caught in his wrath, Israel. He also pours out his wrath and his indignation in abundance. He doesn't withhold anything. When he does something, it's to the fullest extent, Israel. And we must understand that. Why? Because if we don't continue a walk in the Torah or the Mishvah, then what? We will be consumed by the Kalah, by the curse. Hallelujah. I don't want to be concerned, consumed in the curse, Yisrael. Hallelujah. So what must we do, Zakain? Simply just walk in his mishvah, what he has commanded us to do. Being pure and set apart, a people that is set apart from the world. We don't do as the world. We should not look like the world. Anything that is highly esteemed amongst the world, amongst the heathen, it should not be found in the mishvah on the congregation of Almighty Yahweh. It's an abomination. It's a false balance. The world presents a false balance, and it's an abomination before Almighty Yahweh. They say they have the riches of Almighty Yahweh, or what they say, quote, God, they have their riches, but yet their lives are thrown unbalanced. There's no balance in their home. There's no ahava in the home. There's no peace. There's no shalom. Yahweh, he desires shalom amongst his congregation. Shalom amongst Yisrael. Hallelujah. That we may be a people that is balanced. Have a just weight. That is important, Yisrael. And it all has to do with the abundance of Almighty Yahweh. You can't have one without the other, Yisrael. We can't be a people that are lacking and that are slack and deem that we have all the riches and the blessings of Almighty Yahweh. It doesn't work that way. He talks about a just balance. I will get to that, Yisrael. Hallelujah, Yahweh. However, Yahweh, just lead me, Yahweh, whatever you intend for me to say and to do on this day. This is Yah's day. This is Yah's Yah. Hallelujah. And Yahweh shall open to you his tough treasure. The Shemayams to give rain to your land in his season. Don't we desire the rain? The rain is so important to the crops and the due season, Yisrael. Because even if the fruit trees at their time of flowering, even before then, water is key. Enough water is very important. Why? Because it needs that to produce the puree or the fruit. So if the rain doesn't come in due season, then what's going to happen? The harvest is going to lack. The harvest is going to be small. It's not going to be a great harvest just right, y'all. So we desire, and Yahweh, he will send rain to your land in his season. And to bless all the works of your hand. And you shall lend to many nations. Did you hear that? There should be so much of an abundance of the blessings of Almighty Yahweh that we will have that in the storehouse to lend, to give, to provide until it says the donations to many nations. And you shall not borrow. No need to borrow. No need to beg. Hallelujah. Now we said that he has not seen the zero of Almighty Yahweh Lacking or out begging for bread, Yisrael. He means that. We should be people to lend, to give, and not beg or not take from any other nation or any other people because of the abundance of Almighty Yahweh. But we must have the balance. We must walk in the Torah of Almighty Yah. And Yahweh shall make you the head and not the tail. We shall be the forerunners. 
the beginners, the starters of all nations, the example, not the tail end, not coming in last, not being the scrubs, no, the head and not the tail. And you shall be only above, only above, set on high. We should be as a city set on a hill, or as a city set on a hill whose light cannot be hid, Israel. That's what Yahweh wants. That's what Yahweh desires. Is not Yahweh set on high above all things? Is he going to require less of his people, of his bride? No. He wants us to be set on high and only above. And you shall not be beneath. If you what? Shema. If you will hearken, if you will listen to the commandments of Yahweh your Almighty, which I command you this day, to guard and to do them. So we cannot be hearers only. We cannot sit here and just hear. We must take what we hear, what we hide in our love, Yisrael, and we must do it. We must put it into practice. The plans of a building, the layout, no matter how beautiful the structure looks on paper, the plans, it's no good until it is put to use, until each block is set in place, until the measurements are set and the building goes up. Yahweh, he builds his house, Israel, Yah, according to his mitzvah, according to his Torah, according to the multitude of his blessings. Hallelujah. He built a house that is not built by man's hands. Israel, Yah, what we see is not built by man's hands, but it's built by the hands of Almighty Yahweh according to his Torah. So we must walk after the Torah, after the book, after what Yahweh has laid out, Israel, Yah, to guard them and to do them, verse 14. And you shall not turn aside any of the words which I command you this day. Do we find ourselves turning aside? Rejecting and denying the truth when it goes forth, Yisrael. We resist. We cause our necks to be hardened and to be stiffened in the presence of Almighty Yahweh. He said you should not turn to the right or to the left to go after other gods, other aspirations, other desires to serve them. We should not do that, Yisrael. That is a false balance. It is an unjust weight before Almighty Yahweh. Does Yahweh, has he dealt with us unjustly, Israel? Yah? Is there a false balance? Is Yahweh false? No, he doesn't. And in his abundance, he pours them out in full, Israel. Yah. Hallelujah. We're going to come back to Deuteronomy chapter 28. But let us move on concerning this unjust weight that I've been talking about, Israel. Yah. It's important that we understand this, even at this time. When Yahshua HaMashiach, when he comes, isn't he coming for much fruit? He desires an abundance. Even in the weight, he wants much, Yisrael Yah. He's, he's not coming back for a leanness of the crop, one or two fruit. That's not what he's coming back for. But the Torah says he's coming back for an abundance. Hallelujah. Meshha, the weight, the riches by weight, Israel. Proverbs 11, chapter 1 through 4, I do want to read. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. What is our worth, Israel? What is our weight to Almighty Yahweh? His Torah, His Mishra, what does it mean to us? Does it contain the abundance or co all of Yahweh? Hallelujah. Proverbs chapter 11, verse 1. A false balance is what? An abomination. It's a detestable thing before Almighty Yahweh. He despises it. To Abba Yahweh. But a just weight is what? His delight. He delights in a just weight. He does not delight in one that walks after lies. And then they show that they have some kind of wealth by treasures, Israel. Yeah. It is false. It is lies. Verse 2. It talks about pride. When pride comes, then comes shame. That is a false balance. Pride. 
That's one word we should not say. I'm proud of this. I, I have pride in that. If anything, dignity. Or I'm proud of what I've done and what I've accomplished. What we accomplished don't mean anything before Almighty Yahweh. But what Yahshua has accomplished, I find comfort in. What the Torah of Yahweh accomplished, and when it is finished, the fruits that come forth, I'm comforted in. Hallelujah. But with lowliness or lowly is wisdom. That is a just way. That is a balance. That's balance before Almighty Yahweh. Again, verse 3. The integrity of the upright, it says, shall guide them. Of the upright, of the Sadiq. What is a Sadiq man? Does he transgress the Torah? No, he walked after the Torah of Almighty Yahweh. So the Sadiq man, the righteousness that he has, which is from Almighty Yahweh, is not of his own righteousness or of his own will. And that it says he shall be guided or led, Yisrael. That is a just balance before Almighty Yahweh. When we walk after our own ways and our own paths, that's a false balance. It's a false balance. It's an unjust weight. Bear with me as I move on, Israel. Right, yeah. Hallelujah. If I don't accomplish but me a little bit today, if you just grasp a little bit of the Torah, then I have accomplished so much. I have accomplished much. Because the, the, the little that a Sadiq man has, it is more and it weighs more, it's worth more than all. The riches, all the world, Yisrael, all that can be gained. It's worth more than all the riches of the wicked. Hallelujah. But the perverseness of transgressors, it shall destroy them. Do we find ourselves transgressing the Torah, perverse, filthy things? Verse 4. It says, riches profit not in the day of wrath. That, that, is, that is true. The riches of this life, of this world, it's not going to profit you. It's not going to buy salvation for you or deliverance or a comfort for you in the days of wrath. But Sadiq or the righteousness of Almighty Yahweh, of Yahshua, Hamashiach, delivers from death. It's the Sadiq things that are the weight. The only thing that carries the weight and substance, Yisrael. It's not these false things. That gives us comfort. Yeah. It's not these false things that give us the strength to persevere or to move on Yisrael. It's only the righteousness of Yahshua HaMashiach. Yeah. Hallelujah. Which is a just weight. Hallelujah. Talking about the weight. Yeah. Important in understanding the much Hallelujah. of Almighty Yahweh. The overflowing of his blessing in Yahshua HaMashiach. Verse 25, chapter 25 of Deuteronomy. Unjust weights, Yisrael. We cannot declare we are the possessors of much if we are yet unjust in our practices, walking after the Torah of Almighty Yahweh. Deuteronomy chapter 25, verse 13. Verse 13 through 16, I want to read. It says, you shall not have in your bag diverse ways. What do we have in our possession, Yisrael? What do we have in our left, in our mind? Is that not where we remember, we zaka, or we store things? A bag? We have all kinds of things in that bag that does not please Almighty Yahweh in our mind and in our hearts, Yisrael. Unjust ways. It says, let me read that again. You shall not have in your bag diverse weights, a great and a small. You shall not have in your by it or in your house diverse measures, a great and a small. Let us move on to verse 15. But you shall have a what? A perfect. A perfect, by weight, by measure, it's perfect before Almighty Yahweh. But you shall have a perfect and a just weight, 
a perfect and a just measure shall you have. How are we going to obtain these things without the Torah? How are we going to obtain these things without the Ruach HaKodesh of Almighty Yahweh? There's no, there's no other way. We can't go around the Torah. It's too wide. It's too broad. You can't go over it. It's too high. You can't go under it, Yisrael Yah. It's too low. That your days may be lengthened in the land which Yahweh your Almighty, he shall give unto you. Hallelujah. That's the only way we're going to make it to the Melku or the kingdom of Almighty Yahweh. Where his riches abound. Where his Ahava abound, Yisrael Yah. We must be full of the Torah. We can't. Can you get sweet and bitter water out of a cistern or out of a fountain? You're going to get either one or the other. That's what it means by having a small, a small weight and a large weight. There must be, it must be just weights, Israel. Because Yahweh, he deal with us justly. In his judgment, he deal with us justly. Hallelujah. For all that do such things and all that do unrighteously, are an abomination to Yahweh, our Almighty. So if we do anything other than the Torah, what Yahweh has directed us to do, Yahweh, Israel, Yahweh, it is an abomination to Almighty Yahweh. That's what it is. Let us move on. 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 13 through 18. I want to read. Yahweh is just, Israel. Yahweh. Has he not declared that this flesh, it shall go back to the dust from which it was formed. He means that. That's for all men. That's for all flesh, Israel. Hallelujah. Has he not given us the air that we breathe? Does not the Sadiq breathe that same air? And those who are Risha, he's just, isn't he? When he rains, the showers from the Shemayim, it rains upon the just just as it does the unjust. So Yahweh, he's, he's just. He's not unfair, Yisrael Yah. 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 13. We have the same Ruach of Imuna of faith. According to as is written, I believe and therefore I have spoken. Isn't, isn't that not how we should speak, Yisrael Yah? Of what Yahweh has given us, the Torah, the Mitzvah of Almighty Yahweh. We also believe, therefore we speak. Knowing that he which raised up Master Yahshua HaMashiach shall raise, up us, raise us up also by Yahshua, by the rock of Yahshua HaMashiach. And shall, pre and, shall, and shall present us with you. Verse 15. For all things are for your sake. Do we believe that? Yes. That all things work together for the sake or for the tub of Yisrael? Yes. That the abundant, free or merited pardon might through thanksgiving of many redound or abound or multiply to the honor and the splendor of Almighty Yahweh. For which cause we faint not. That's why we're able to overcome. That's why we're able to stand, Yisrael. But through our outward man, it perished. Every day, our outward man, this flesh perishes, Yisrael. Every man, it perishes, the flesh. But yet, it, the inward man, it says, is renewed day by day. The inward man is strengthened day by day. So as we see this flesh... Becoming weaker, ailments and things in this body, yet the inner man, it becomes stronger and stronger in Yisrael. Yeah. The abundant wealth of riches from Almighty Yahweh strengthen us. Why? We see this physical man deteriorating. That's somewhat bring, if you're not standing on the Torah, almost a discomfort. Well, all man is going to face death, Yisrael. Yeah. But Yisrael, yeah, we are victorious over death. Because of Yahshua HaMashiach. The sting of death shall not come upon Yisrael. If we abide, continue to abide in the Torah of Almighty Yahweh. Verse 17. For it says our light afflictions. Did it say that? Anyone in here have, have some heavy afflictions? Does it say light afflictions here? Is it the Torah alive? Is it just talking back then when this was written? 
the Torah or this letter? It's talking about now, Yisrael. So we experience light afflictions. Why is it considered light, Yisrael? Let me read on. Which is for but a moment. That's why. Because it don't last. It's only for a moment, Yisrael. It says, works for us a far more exceeding and eternal weight of honor and splendor in Yahshua HaMashiach. Verse 18. He said, while we look not at the things which are seen. Are those the things that we look upon, Yisrael? The things which are seen? Should not we store up our treasures, the abundance, and the Shemayims? Where moth and rust cannot corrupt, where thieves cannot break in and steal. And Satan, isn't he a thief? Does he, has he not come to steal, kill, and to destroy? He tried to take all that we have, all that Yah has given us, but he won't be able to break it to the kingdom. So let us store our treasures and our wealth in the kingdom, in the Melkut of Almighty Yahweh, which should be established in every level, Yisrael. Hallelujah. Those are chosen by Almighty Yahweh. But at the things which are not seen, for the things which are seen are temporal. What we see are temporal, Yisrael. So do we base what we see as the abundance of what Yahweh gives to us as all he has to offer? No. It's the things that are not seen, Yisrael. But the things which are not seen, it says, are eternal. Here's a hava. It's eternal. We see it manifested, but you, you, can't, you cannot physically see it, Yisrael. It abounds much. His, his mercies exceedingly great, and it abounds towards the house of Yisrael. As we move on, let's move back to Deuteronomy chapter 28, verse 15. 15 through 29 is what I'm going to read, but feel free, Yisrael, read the whole chapter. It's showing the blessings of Almighty Yahweh, what he do if we abide, if we maintain, if we shema, if we hear, and if we do his mishvah. But he also sends the pala of the curse and abundance, Yisrael, if we do not, do not walk after the Torah of Almighty Yahweh. Deuteronomy chapter 28, verse 15. But it shall come to pass, if you will not hearken to the voice of Yahweh, your Almighty, did he not command us at the beginning of Deuteronomy to watch and to guard? If we do not obey him, if we do not watch and guard to do all his commandments and his statutes, which I command you this day, that all these palah, these curses, the kalah, shall come upon you. And what does it say? And what? Overtake. Does the flood overtake? When the fire rages in its fury, does it overtake, Israel? So Yahweh, he shall overtake who? You, Israel. And we do not walk after the, according to the statutes and the commandment of Almighty Yahweh. And what shall he to, do to all the blessings that we read? Well, let us continue in verse 16, Deuteronomy chapter 28. He says, Kalah, cursed shall you be in the city. And cursed shall you be in the field. This is still talking about the muchness of Almighty Yahweh. It's all the same, Yisrael. All the same. Yahweh is not unjust in his weight. He divides the flame of fire, Yisrael, his judgment to Yisrael. Curse shall your basket and your storehouse, your store places. Curse shall you be in the fruit of your body and in the fruit of your land and the increase of your cattle and the flocks of your sheep. Your possessions, all shall be cursed. What you deem as valuable, it shall all be cursed, Israel. Cursed shall you be when you go in, and cursed shall you be when you go out. Hallelujah. Verse 20. Yahweh shall send upon you cursing, vexation, and rebuke, and all that you set your hand forth to do. Until you be destroyed. And until you perish quickly because of the wickedness of your doings. Have we not done wickedly, Israel? Come on, be honest with yourselves today. 
Hallelujah. We have de dealt treacherously with Almighty Yahweh. We have come before him with slackness. Hallelujah. That's why I brought Yahweh for the Dhamma, Yahshua. Hamashiach. That washes all of our sins and all our shortcomings. He brings us up to the mark, Yisrael, that we may be upon high places and the blessings of Almighty Yahweh. Is he not the Torah? Well, he should abide in us, Yisrael, Yahshua HaMashiach. Let me move on. Thereby, Yahweh says, you have forsaken me. Verse 21. Yahweh shall make the pestilence cleave unto you. What is cleaving? It's a tight grip. If I may use this term, it's like a death grip. You, you, you don't want to let go. That's how the pestilence shall come. Did he not send the pestilence in Mizraim? Now, it was slack. There was only the plagues of frogs and toads. There was only a couple of toads wandering around. No. It, it, it cannot be expressed in number. Everything, everywhere. Even in the locked places that were sealed, toads. When the water ran with the blood, it was only a stream? Or was it just the water that was sitting in the cups? No, all the water. Even the water they thought they could store up in vats and in vases. It all was blood. Hallelujah. So Yahweh, he sends his judgment also in an abundance. Until he has consumed you from off of the land where you should go to possess it, Yisrael. We don't want to be consumed. We don't want to be overtaken in this matter, Yisrael. So we, it's important. We must walk in and stay in and abound in Yahshua HaMashiach, the Torah of Almighty Yahweh, and walk after the Ruach HaKodesh. Verse 22. Yahweh shall smite you with consumption and with a fever and with a inflammation and with an extreme burning. And not only that, but with the sword. If we live by the sword, don't we live by the sword? Should not we have the sword of the Torah of Almighty Yahweh on our side, Israel? We should not bear the sword in vain. If you, don't you know if you live by the sword, you also die by the sword, Israel? And with blasting, and with, with mildew, and they shall pursue you until you perish. And your heavens that is over your head shall be brass, and the earth that is under you shall be iron. Yahweh shall make the rain of your land powder and dust, for the Shemayim shall it come down upon you until you be destroyed. Did he not promise the rain at due season? But, we, but that's, that's only if we walk in the Mishvah, the Torah of Almighty Yahweh, shall we receive those blessings, Yisrael. And here he sends dust raining down from the Shemayims. Verse 25, Yahweh shall curse you to be smitten before your enemies and shall go out one way against them and shall flee seven ways. Should we flee before the wicked? We should not flee before the wicked because we flee before the wicked. Little is our strength, Israel. Yeah. And we have me, oh, we have very little strength Hallelujah. in this walk, Israel. If we do not walk after the Torah of Almighty Yahweh. And shall be removed into all the kingdoms of the earth. And your carcass shall be meat for the fowls of the air. And to the beasts of the earth. And no man shall fray them away. Yahweh will smite you with the bosh of Egypt. That's the judgments. That's the cancers of Egypt, Israel. And with the mirrors, and with the scab, and with the itch, wherefore you cannot be healed. That is miserable. M miserable. They have itch, um, boils and rashes, and you cannot, it's, they, they, they don't, you can't soothe them. There's nothing you can put on them to stop or ease the itching. Yahweh shall smite you with baldness and with blindness and astonishment of love. And the last verse in Deuteronomy that I'm going to read. Concerning the Pala, even in the much of Almighty Yahweh. And you shall grope at noonday before it's even dark. 
and the brightness of the light which shall grow. And as the blind gropes in darkness, you shall not prosper in your ways. And you shall be only oppressed and spoiled evermore. And no man, did it say no man? No man shall be able to save you. No man shall be able to save us. There's no way we're going to be delivered, Yisrael. Why? Walking contrary to the Torah of Almighty Yahweh. There's no man that could deliver you out of his hands or out of his judgments, Yisrael. So let us walk after his commandments. It's not hard to do. It's not hard to do, Yisrael. We just do it. We just trust and obey what Yahweh commands unto his people. Yes. Hallelujah. Turn with me to Yo, chapter 28, verse 12. Can the abundance of Yahweh, can it be measured? Can his wisdom be measured? Israel? Can his Ahava be measured in weight? Man has taught us to measure all things, everything. Trust is measured. Love is measured. They put a See, when you measure something or you're able to measure something, you put, um, you're able to end it. You limit it. Yes, right, yeah. When Yahweh does anything, it cannot be limited. But yet, man, he limits, he tries to limit Yah. He tries to limit the Torah. He tries to take things and add things to the Torah of Almighty Yahweh, but it's not going to stop him, Yes, right, yeah. It's not going to work. Yo, chapter 28, verse 12. I'm going to begin reading. But where shall wisdom be found? And where is the place of understanding? Man knows not the price thereof. Neither is it found in the land of the living. Verse 14. The deaf saith, it is not in me. The sea saith, it is not within me. So even the depths of the sea cannot express that the death of Almighty Yahweh or even the deepest places on earth, Yisrael. Verse 15. It cannot be gotten for gold, neither shall silver be weighed for the price thereof. Hallelujah. It cannot be weighed. It cannot be measured, Yisrael. The wisdom of Almighty Yahweh. It says it cannot be valued with gold, with the gold of Ophrah. Can you imagine that? Not even the most precious gold, the gold of Ophrah, the purest of the gold. Even as much can be collected, more than you can imagine, it cannot measure to the muchness or the great wealth of Almighty Yahweh. It says neither with the precious oxy stones. That's what's the oxy, precious stones. Or the sapphires. The gold and the clear crystal cannot equal it. The muchness of Almighty Yahweh, what he gives unto Yisrael, and abundance through Yahshua HaMashiach. And the exchange of it shall not be for jewels or for fine gold. Can we buy our salvation without Yahshua HaMashiach? Can any amount we bring be enough? It cannot. The, the, the mercies of Almighty Yahweh, His dumb, the preciousness of Almighty Yahshua, Yahshua HaMashiach, it cannot be measured, Yisrael, what He has done for us in delivering our souls from the law of sin and from eternal damnation. Verse 18. No mention shall be made of coral or of crystal, for the price of wisdom is above rubies. But yet he gives it to us, Israel. The world, they, they're wise in their own conceit. They don't have the wisdom of Yahweh. The wisdom of Yahweh is only given to Israel. And it's, it can't be measured, Israel. It cannot be issued out by man. But it's given freely from Almighty Yahweh through the throne room of Almighty Yah. Hallelujah. Isn't that tough to know, Israel? It says the topaz or the Pitta, which is the precious stones, even that of Cush, cannot equal it. Yeah. Neither shall it be valued with pure gold. Yeah. Yeah. Verse 20 of verse chapter 28 of Yo. Whence then comes wisdom? How does it come? Where does it come from? 
And where is the place of understanding? Seeing it is hid from the eyes of what is it? What does it say there? All living. It is hidden from the eyes of all living. It cannot be searched out just by the eyes, Israel. It cannot be searched out by the tools of man. It cannot be discovered by the intellect of man. And kept close from the fowls of the air. Destruction and death say, we have heard the fame thereof with our ears. Yahweh, he understands the way thereof. And he knows the place thereof. Because it all comes from him, Yisrael. For he looks to the ends of the earth and sees under the whole Shemayim to make what? The weight for the winds. Can you weigh air? Can you weigh the movement of the winds? They, can, they try to measure the capacity of it, but it cannot be weighed. Yah says he weighs it. To make weight for the wind. And he weighs even the water by measure. You cannot measure all the water of the world. There's no way it could be done by man's hand. But Yah, he knows the weight of it. Hallelujah. Knowing all this, Yisrael, Yah, why should we doubt? Why should we doubt what Yahweh says in his mishpah, in his commandments? All the promises, even the curses. But if we walk according to all that he has commanded us, his statutes, this day, this day, in Yahshua HaMashiach, there's no other way to be happy in Almighty Yahweh. Verse 26, where he made a decree for the rain and a way for the lightning and of the thunder. Then did he see it and declare it. He prepared it. Yes, he searches it out. Verse 28, and to man he said, behold, the fear of the sovereign Yahweh, that is wisdom, the fear. That is the wisdom of Yahweh. It cannot be searched out. It cannot be measured, Yisrael. And depart, to depart from evil is the understanding. Don't you see how, how great and profound that is? But yet so simple, Yisrael. The wisdom is the fear of Almighty Yahweh, simply put. And to depart from evil, to cease from sin, to walk in the Torah of Almighty Yahweh is his understanding. It is his understanding, Yisrael. Turn me to Mishli as I bring this to a close. This evening, the abundance, the riches of Almighty Yahweh and Yahshua HaMashiach. Like I said, I took off, stood off the page a little, but I'm still in the book, Yisrael, because it's important that we understand this just wait. We have to understand it. We cannot walk unjust before Almighty Yahweh. After sin, in sin, transgressing the Torah, and say that we have this great, great witches. It's not so. What we procure upon ourselves is the kala, it's the curses. In abundance, Yisrael. Mishli, Proverbs chapter 16, 1 through 11, I'm going to read in my closing. I pray it's been an inspiration to your love, Yisrael. To what? To just continue. To continue in the walk. In the straight path of Almighty Yahweh. Don't let anything deter you to the right or to the left. But that we stay forward in this straight and narrow way. It's a narrow way, Yisrael. It's not for every man to walk this way. Only those that have been elected by the Dhamma, Yahshua HaMashiach. He did not lose any. Verse 1, chapter 16 of Proverbs. The partitions, the preparations of the heart in Adam, and the answer of the tongue is from Almighty Yahweh. All the man, all the ways of man are clean in his own eyes. The Sadiq, they're righteous in his own eyes. Everything, it says all, didn't it? All the ways of man is clean in his own eyes. But Yahweh, he weighs the Ruach. So it's not in what you think is righteous, Yisrael, Yah, that you do. Offerings unto Almighty Yahweh. 
It must be an obedience. It's not by the, if I may say, the sacrileges. Or you try to, try to um, show the wealth of Almighty Yahweh just through your dress alone. Or what you put in your head. Or what you camp yourself around. Because Yahweh, he sees through all that. He weighs the love of man. So he sees through all the falseness, Israel. What he desires is what's in the heart, what's in the left. And that even is of great wealth unto him, Israel. Verse 3. He said, commit your works to Yahweh, and your thoughts shall be established. That's a just weight. And we commit it all unto Abba Yahweh. Yahweh has made all things for himself. Yes, even the wicked for the day of judgment or the day of evil. Everyone that is proud and left is an abomination to Almighty Yahweh. Do we recall earlier in the Torah talking about pride, Yisra'ya, abomination before Almighty Yahweh? Though hand join hand, he shall not be unpunished. By mercy and truth is iniquity purged. And by the fear of Yahweh, men depart from evil. When a man's ways please Almighty Yahweh, he makes even his enemies to be at shalom. I believe that. Even those that pursue us, he makes our enemies at shalom. Even our enemies, Satan, cannot touch us. Yisra'ya. Verse 8. Better is the meot, the little, with Sadiq or with righteousness yes, than the great revenues without being Sadiq or without being right. That's all right. Yeah. A man's heart devises his way. But Yahweh, hallelujah, Yahweh directs his steps. Yeah. And it's Yahweh that leads us. It's Yahweh that directs each step that we take, hallelujah, as we draw closer and nearer to his Melkut, his kingdom, Yisrael. Verse 10, verse 11, as I close. A divine sentence is in the lips of the king. His mouth, his mouth transgresses not in judgment. A just weight and a balance are Yahweh's. That's what the Torah says. The Satan, does he have a just weight? No, he doesn't. It belongs to Yahweh. Anything, doesn't all tough and perfect gifts come from Almighty Yahweh from above? Through Yahshua HaMashiach? A just weight is a balance and balance are Yahweh's. And the weight of the bags are his works. Hallelujah. So let us in our bags, in our bosom, in our mind, in our buy it, store up the works of the muchness of Almighty Yahweh Yisrael. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Is Yahweh tough? Does not his mercies endure? They're renewed every morning to the house of Yisrael. Yahweh Barak, you all. Um, at this time, Riyadh Dawi, come on. Hallelujah. We're going to have a gathering this evening at. 7.30, all right? You that have been with us in the past, you know, we gather here in the fellowship and have a nice big fire. It's not cold as it usually is, but that's all right. We'll still do it and roast some nice beef and chicken sausages and have a great time in fellowship. We're going to meet at 7.30 here at the uh, burn. Uh, I heard someone give it a better name than me, the barn fire. The what? Fellowship fire, yeah, that's what it's like. Came to me. We're gonna meet at the fellowship fire here, right here, where the basketball court. We got lights and all of that. At 7:30, we're gonna have a great time, a great fellowship. That's what this time is all about: eating and having a great time. So don't worry about your weight and calories. You get back on the calorie count after Monday evening. All right, from Monday evening to Tuesday evening, then you start worrying about your calories. Okay. 
All right, if you put on two or three pounds, four pounds, you can get that off. Just miss one or two meals. I said to my uh uh, uh cool Dallas from, from McKinney, Texas, I said, you know, this brother, I like the way he, he, he's like a man. He knows how to work chicken and fish. He works it like a champion. I love to watch him eat. I see, man, that's the way my mother-in-law was when I would eat in her home. She loved cooking for me because I did not let anything slide off the plate. You understand? And also, you that are listening, just you that join us, we're going to alter the service. We were going to have our Yom Rishon service tomorrow evening. We're going to have that in the morning. All right, so those that have to leave, we can make sure that they can participate a little so they can get back to the airport. Yes, uh, uh, he leaves in the morning. His flight leaves early in the morning. So we'll, we'll accommodate that. So we're going to have service tomorrow at 11. And then we'll have time to fellowship and all that. That's the most important thing. Fellowship is, is a true beauty, Yisra'ya. We learn how to appreciate each other. That's what it's about. Just... You know, they have family reunions, don't they? They tolerate each other, sweet to each other. So let us do that. Uh, you know, it's amazing. Let me say this before we dismiss, and we're going to have dinner. What time? Just right after service? Okay, we'll eat dinner right after service. It's amazing that people, you know, th there are not many people that like me. That's just the truth, and I know that. There was a young man to write. He said he wants to come. All right, brother. That's all right, like that. And you see those that will come, they have no regard for nothing. Anything you say that is not uh, appetizing or apote for them, then they don't like that. I watch it all the time. I know who's real and who's disingenuine. They don't want to hear anything of truth. They don't want to hear the sincere things of Yah. And so that's why this generation operates in the manner that it does. But I am all right with that. I'm not concerned about the multitude or the magnitude of numbers, because I know what that means. You understand? I'm going to lay it out the way it should be. Why? Because you know your sure said that we are the salt of the earth. And if the salt loses its flavor, its, its substance, then it is tough for nothing. It is meant to be thrown out and trodden under the foot of man. That's what he says. Then he also said that we are the ore, we are the ma'or, we are the light that rejoices. We're the light of the world. We're the light, Yisra'ya, the city that sit upon a hill that cannot be hid. So we are the ma'or, not just ore, we are the ma'or. There's a difference between you see a little star out there, one of the star that it almost seemed like it's pulsating. It's a difference between the ma'or, there's rejoicing and gladness. It's a light that rejoices with great gladness. So that's what we are. So I'm not offended at men. Uh, I hear from, I said, when I say I will talk, I'm talking about us. We hear from those and their remarks and their comments. But that's all right, Yisra, yeah. We're going to press on. We're going to have a great time. We're going to serve Yah and bless Him. And we're going to eat because I am hungry and I'm ready to eat. You understand? I'm hungry. My belly says it's time to eat. And there's a little groaning there with a little pain on the side. So I know it's time to eat. I'm not going to hold you up. Come on, let's stand to our feet. We get you all that have joined us, and we appreciate, appreciate your kindness, your gifts. Do send a gift to help, to assist, and the labor here. It's not used for any kind of fancy lifestyle. That's why we invite you to come so you will know that we don't live beyond the means of young. We live simple yeah. here. Let us turn toward Yerushalayim as long as we're in the Shabbat. Yahweh brought you for all things for your great riches and blessings and your sure touch, Yisra'ya. Grant unto us a great shalom this evening that we may rejoice in all of your abundance. We ask all things according to your riches and your sure mighty name. Strengthen, guide us, teach us in all of your perfect will. We ask your riches and blessings to rest upon each of us in your sure's name. Cause this fellowship to be great with abundance with spontaneity from our hearts that we rejoice in the presence of our, our Abba and for all Yisrael. We ask it all in Yeshua's name. Hallelujah. 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 Hallelujah.